Hello and welcome to another edition of Conspirator Brock's Pull List. This is my pull list for the week of October 12th, 2020. Uh, let's get right into it. First up we have Batman and the Outsiders number 15. Uh, Brian Hill's done a fantastic job on this. It's going to come to an end soon. I believe 17 will be the last issue. Uh, so we got a cute couple more months of Batman and the Outsiders, but then it's done. I've been enjoying the series. It's good. Next up we have a book that I'm kind of eh on because of just the stuff with their creator and all that and that's Batman's Grave number 9 of 12. I'm going to finish out this series um, but yeah it's a little tainted with what War, um, with uh, what Warren Ellis is, is kind of been uh, doing. It's weird. Yeah. Moving on. Billionaire Island number four by Mark Russell is out and it's fantastic. This book is hilarious. It's amazing. I love it and you should check Billionaire Island out. Next up is Dark Knight's Death Metal number three. Uh, we're on issue three of Dark Knight's Death Metal. If you have not been getting it, we sold out completely before, uh, before copies even hit the shelves of the main cover. So if you guys really want those copies, you need to get those pre-ordered in with your local shop ASAP. So yeah. Uh, but yeah, Dark Knight's Death Metal, really great stuff. You should be getting it. Next up we have, uh, Detective Comics number 1025. This is more tie-ins with Joker War. This is the collateral damage stuff. Um, I can't wait to see what happens in it. It looks amazing. Uh, Joker War has been good so far. I've enjoyed it. I'm a little bit behind on the main story, but I'm planning on catching up hopefully soon. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's going to be tricky. I have to get just to a new schedule because I'm heading back to the day job this week. Um, just meetings and then next week is full back to online education and being a paraeducator in Google Meet classrooms. Fun stuff. I'm totally lying. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, my reading schedule and stuff is a little off, so I've gotten a little stack of stuff I need to read, but I'll get to it hopefully and get it back on track. Next up is Flash number 759. Uh, Flash seems to go evil here. Joshua Williams done a fantastic job on his run of Flash. Uh, I can't wait to see how he finishes it out. I know it's coming to an end soon and he's going to be moving on to other things. But yeah, his Flash has been fantastic. And Flash has just been a solid, solid title ever since the New 52. Um, and so that's, I mean, that's a track record of being almost 10 years, a solid book. So if you haven't checked out Flash, you really should. Next up is Hawkman number 26. Robert Vendetti is knocking it out of the park with this book. Uh, if you're not reading it, you really need to be. Hawkman is just a fantastic read. Great stuff. It dives into this craziness that is the Hawkman mythos and just goes just full throttle into it. And it's amazing. Next up, we have Justice League Odyssey number 23. This book's coming to a close soon as well. Um, I've enjoyed the story. It's a very slow spurn in space, but it's been entertaining. So I can't wait to see how it ends. Next up is a new one from Tom Taylor and Boom Studios, and that's Seven Secrets. This is, of course, the main cover, Seven Secrets. Um, I'm check I picked it up to check it out, see how it is. A lot of buzz around this book, so uh, if your shop did not pick up enough copies, uh, be sure to check out um, online to see if you can get it. Comics Conspiracy, we got a plenty of extra copies of the main cover, but they are going, so uh, yeah. Next up is Something is Killing the Children, number nine. Again, another... Great title from Boom Studios. Well, this is a great title from Boom Studios. It's, I'm, I'm not sure I haven't read it yet for Seven Secrets. So. But Something is Killing Children, Children is fantastic. You need to be reading it. Next up is Superman number 24. Uh, it seems like Superman is coming out at a slower pace. I just feel like I haven't read a Superman, like this last Superman book, 23 in so long. It's just really, really weird. I don't know what's going on, but with like... COVID and, and all that stuff, it feels like it's just been a long time since I read Superman. So we'll see. But I mean, it's still Bendis. So next up, we have Wonder Woman number 760. Again, this is with the new creative team of uh, Tamaki and Janine. And man, I, I, I haven't read 759. I, I know I'm, I dropped the ball. I need to. Uh, but yeah, it's I, I it, now I got two issues to read. So that's how I look at it. Uh, that's it actually for this week's of books. We got shorted a couple titles, so I don't have those this week, um, but they'll be on uh, future pull lists. Uh, one of those was Oblivion Song. Another is uh, Low the Lois Lane children's book that came out um, So from DC. So be on the lookout in future uh, 
episodes for those. Um, but I did pick up some variant covers this week. The first one is for Batman and the Outsiders 15. Um, I, I, I love Batman and the Outsiders, so I get every cover. So, yeah. Uh, Dark Knight's Death Metal had an awesome Wally West um, Dr. Manhattan variant there. Uh, and then we had the Robin King variant for number three. And then we also had one for Supergirl for number three. There's also a one in 25 variant and a one in 100 variant. So Dark Knight's Death Metal has plenty of variants. Uh, some are pricey, but you can get most of them for cover price if they're still around. Uh, I like the, the cover for Detective 1025, so I snagged that up despite it being the higher price point. Uh, and then I got the Lee in Hink, Lee in Hink, I don't, I, I think that's how you say it. Uh, but his Flash 759, or the 759 variant for Flash. Um, and I actually picked up that, the variant, the same artist variant for Seven Secrets. So I picked that one up as well. And then of course there was a amazing, amazing cover, um, don't remember who it was by, but for Wonder Woman 760, that is awesome right there. So yeah, so definitely wanted to snag that one up. Uh, yeah, and then I did get some uh, special order stuff in. Uh, I got <clears throat> Captain Marvel Bef We Wear the Flarkin uh, for my daughter. This is a kid's picture book for her to read. She loves Captain Marvel, so I figured give it a shot. Uh, so yeah, we'll see if she likes it. She was actually pointing at it earlier going, is that for me? And I said yes. Uh, next up is a book that I've actually been looking forward to, um, and I don't think a lot of people really know uh, about uh, this line of DC books because they kind of come out sporadically, and it's been a long time since we've had one, um, and it's something that not necessarily people just jump to as a recommendation, but the Earth One series of straight-to-graphic novel uh, books that DC has put out is really good. Uh, the new one that is out is for uh, Green Lantern, Earth 1, Volume 2. The first one of this was fantastic. I highly recommend you go back and pick up a copy and read it. It is great stuff. All of them have been really solid, solid books. Uh, the Superman, the Batman, the Wonder Woman, the Titan, the Teen Titans one. Um, I surprisingly liked, and I'm not a huge fan of the Teen Titans. The Green Lantern one has been amazing. Uh, so yeah, you should really check out Earth 1 uh, as a, if you're curious about reading some kind of alternative origins or, or like different origins or part of the like the earth one that multiverse that this is that earth stories so it's good check it out but i can't wait to dive into this and next up we have the star wars darth vader uh dark lord of the sith volume two hardcover this collects all of charles finishes collecting all of charles souls run on darth vader um, so yeah, I can't wait to finally bust this one open and the previous one open and finally read it. Uh, I read a, the handful of the early issues and they were great, but it just fell off. So yeah, so I highly recommend picking up these Darth Vader's. They're really good. If you want to wait for the trade paperback, that's fine. But man, the Darth Vader series, the first one and this one are fantastic and must reads in my opinion, if you are a Star Wars fan or if you're a Darth Vader fan or if you just like a good story. Uh, I did get a, uh statue i guess and that is the poison ivy um gallery figure diorama thing uh so i got this one um yeah i i originally saw the the similar one to this at gamestop i don't know if they're set like what's different about them um but gamestop had it it had like i love the base it's like this open pedal it's really awesome hopefully i'll get a chance to do an unboxing video i know i've sucked at getting those out for you guys uh, but I, and I, I'm hoping to get back on some semblance of, of a schedule with that. And I know I've been promising that, but yeah, um, <clears throat> that's it for my pull list this week. Um, there was some huge news that dropped on Monday though, that I wanted to give a, a talk about really quick here. Um, and it was a bunch of layoffs that happened at, uh, DC, DC collectibles, DC direct, DC universe, um, and, um, uh, black label. And uh, basically, a lot of uh, a lot of people are in DC's um, graphic novel department. <clears throat> so AT and T had purchased basically Warner, and and in the process of purchasing Warner, they have since become started to dismantle things, or change things, or streamline things, or so it's really unclear at what their goal is. They I think they've released some statements saying that we're streamlining and blah 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 blah, but that's all they've released is this. 
business ease about stuff when people actually have been losing their jobs, but they actually haven't lost their jobs. And this is the other worst part about it. They were told they have their being let go and they're still employed for 90 days. So welcome to a wonderful work environment. Um, <clears throat> some things that flat that ju that jumped out to me about this kind of bloody Monday that they're calling it at DC uh, is a lot of top people who had been with the company for a long time got cut, which means that those higher salaries got cut uh, <clears throat> and all of that. So that's technically cutting that's cutting costs, so to speak, because if you put somebody in the position that you're moving up, you don't necessarily have to pay them enough. Um, my dad was one of those people in the tech industry. Uh, he was one of the dime a dozen engineers back in the 80s and 90s. Um, and he worked for many different um, hardware companies out here in the Silicon Valley, building computers and microchips and all that stuff. And my dad eventually was um, being paid a lot of money and the company base companies would basically hire him to fix a problem and then fire him and hire two kids fresh out of college and pay them less than both added together less than what they were paying my father um, my dad ended up becoming a contract worker which then was you know no benefits and look we're gonna pay you and then just cut you off um, so this business model is is not necessarily one that I think instills a lot of that's where I'm looking at loyalty. Um, my dad didn't, didn't finish his career out in the uh, industry he started out in. He actually finished the, it out in um, working for Sears as a, uh, what, what was it, uh, a signage person. So he would put signs up for uh, products for what they cost, what they were on sale, all that stuff. So my dad spent the last few years of his working uh, career at Sears in basically signage. So it, it's one of those things where, yay, the train is going by. But, uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, so when people talk about like corporate restructuring and all this stuff, I, like it kind of hits home for me because growing up, you know, there was those, you know, we were hit numerous times with my dad getting laid off and stuff to cut corners and all of that stuff for basically what seemed like just corporate profits and shareholder pockets. And so... That's what I really, and it, with what they have talked about, there's plenty of articles out there you can go find and read at, at the beat on comicbook.com on don't do the ones that bleed and cool. They're just garbage. Uh, but there's plenty of articles out there. Um, but it, it is disconcerting that they would gut so much stuff all at once. Uh, they fired the two top heads of Black Label. Uh, so that presumably could signify something as in their phasing out Black Label. Who knows? Um, I know Pam L, I can't remember her last, Lilliford something, uh, came in to, like she's the brand manager or manager or something within Warner Brothers and was brought in by at and or was brought in by at and and was brought in the week that the uh, infamous Bat Penis was released. And so she has a very sour, uh, um, what's the word, demeanor towards the black label. She doesn't think comic books need to be have a mature line uh dc seems to want to be focusing on more kids books which i think is fine um there is a huge market out there for kids and kids related entertainment um but i think what the biggest thing i find that taking away from this is they're wanting to push kids stuff and cutting the adult stuff but the problem is is that batman can have a g-rated story batman can have an r-rated story um, Joker can have an R-rated story as we've seen even in film and still be a G-rated character in a cartoon. So it's very, it's, it's hard to see what business, like what business is doing to a creative establishment. Um, but down the road, who knows what's going to happen completely. Um, uh, I did say that the DC collectibles and DC direct, which is the DC's direct is the toys and the collectibles is kind of the statues. Those departments were completely wiped out. Um, instead of just being transitioned over to like Warner Toys and becoming just a branch within Warner Toys or a, a section of Warner Toys, which is probably what's going to happen anyway. Like Warner's going to pop out with some DC thing and it's pretty much going to be DC Collectibles and DC Direct, but just not those titles. But people know what DC Direct is and what DC Collectibles is, especially in the market 
like comic book market. So it's weird that they would take something that's already branded and already known and then just get rid of it because they're moving it into something else. It, it doesn't make any sense, but a lot of business stuff doesn't make sense. So we can only like speculate right now what's going to happen at DC. I know some people are like, screaming it's the end, doom, times, comic so I know, so people are screaming, sorry, sorry, the phone cut out, said it was low battery, I'm going to continue. So some people are saying that it's the end times, that DC is down on a downward spiral, this push for kids and this push for digital um, is going to ruin the comic book market, there are no longer going to be any uh, com DC Comics in stores, Marvel's going to become 90% of the market and it can't sustain it and so comic book stores are going to close and all of this is a downhill spiral thing. And to me, that's very, like, it, it's a fatalist viewpoint that I think doesn't really capture what the comic book industry is all about. The people that work in the comic book industry are, industry are passionate about comics. They love comics. They want to make comics. Comics can be made anywhere. They don't need to be made in an office in Burbank or an office in New York or wherever these companies decide to have their corporate offices and get all this publishing stuff done. You can make comics in your living room. You can make comics in your bathroom. You can make comics in your garage. You can make comics on a beach, anywhere. And I'm not gonna start with like a whole Dr. Seuss make comics on a what. Um, but the passion that people have towards comic books, I think will outweigh the damage that is done by shitty business is practices. Um, you know, talking to, like, nobody stands up to the boss and says, that's a shitty idea. Oh, no, it's great. There's a lot of just kind of push of all this garbage. Digital comics are a solid part of the market. They're 10% of the market. They've been solid ever since Comixology dropped. It's just been a solid corner of the market. Trying to push more digital content to get people to buy digital because it is a more cost efficient and cost profitable for the company, I understand but you're not going to get people there by forcing it. People are going to get to reading comics naturally, digitally, down the road. We still are immersed in most of a generation that wants to hold a comic when they read it and feel it and smell it and all the things that come along with actually holding an item in your hand versus scrolling on a phone or scrolling on an iPad or scrolling on a computer to read the next, you know, comic book story that you're reading. And so... While I understand those things, I think there are certain things that need to be addressed and things that need to be basically, oh, I don't know, talked out. Tom Taylor has some, a story for deceased that's going digital only or, or digital first or whatever. It's on digital. You can read it. I personally am not reading it because it's not in a format that I want to read it. It'll most likely come out in physical and I'll buy it then. And even if it doesn't come out in single issue, I'll buy the, co the collection of it and I'll read it and see if I like it. But to me, I think the problem is, is where with these shakeups and stuff like that is a lot of people get basically hurt in the process. Not to mention that the way you go about doing it really kind of just puts a mor the morality like in the toilet. Uh, so, I mean, just imagine being on one of those meetings where you have to talk to people that are basically taking over your jobs or absorbing your job and explaining to them what you do. Uh, apparently some guy from eSports on ESPN or something is, or some eSports guy, or I don't know, it's some E something, my guess eSports, is going to be coming in and taking care of managing publishing in, um, in, for DC. Who knows? Jim Lee's job is, is pretty much the same, but people are like concerned. But if they fired Jim Lee, I think they would, that would be like shooting themselves in the head versus the foot. Uh, so yeah. Lots of stuff to go happen with DC. So, you know, we talked about it at length on the podcast uh, this past week. So if you want, you can check it out there. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, one of the biggest things for me is uh, the, with the DC Collectibles and the DC Direct is the fact that that Joelle Jones uh, cover girls statue with Catwoman in the wedding dress, that's slated to be in stores on the first or like at the beginning of September. Or sorry, yeah, the beginning of September. I, I want that statue. It, this can't stop that statue from being released. So I'm hopeful that I, that we that at least gets out before we have a again another lull in what we're going to be getting from there. 
And I'm really curious to see what happens when a lot of this stuff goes to a direct, like not from the comic book stores, but to a broader audience in kind of how it kind of dilutes the collectability of it or even dilutes just the, the how much people want to get it. Like, am I going to go to Walmart and buy a $150 statue? No. I'm going to go to a comic book store to buy my $150 statue. Um, where are you going to sell these things? In Warner stores? Most mall, Warner Brothers mall stores are gone. Like the one that was at Valley Fair near us, gone. I think it's an Apple, it was, it was an, it's the Apple store now. So it's like, who knows what's going to happen? We can only see, uh, but I really, I, I really feel for all the people that got basically told they're being let go. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, they land on their feet somewhere in the industry because we, you know, we, it, you know, the industry does is a, <clears throat> it might seem at times with comics gate and all the crap that goes on with the sexual harassment stuff and all that me too stuff and everything that seems negative that just pours out of it. The internet trolls just love to eat and spew out at people. The comic book industry is, is actually in, you know, for the most part, I think very inviting. Um, and, we all just want to share and enjoy everything we love about this stuff. So, who knows? To everyone who has let go, condolences. I wish you the best. Hopefully, it it works out in your favor. That's it for this <clears throat> po this uh, podcast. I'm so tired. That's it for this video. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Hopefully, I was able to cut it together. Because if not, who knows what's going to happen. Uh, but, yeah. And um, you can... Uh, you can uh, <clears throat> you can listen to the Comics Conspiracy podcast where we were, we talk more about this stuff. Uh, there's a link in the description below for that. As usual, you can help me and my fellow conspirators out through Patreon at www.patreon.com/comicsconspiracy for as little as a dollar a month. You help us with hosting fees, getting food. Well, no, you don't help us getting food anymore. We don't really do that. Uh, but you help us get product, and that's it's it's really helpful just to have that extra to be able to enjoy getting some more things uh, to talk about and read and enjoy. Uh, so thanks to everyone. You can help me out a little more directly by buying anything through uh, that is on my YouTube channel or at conspiratorbrock.com through any of the Amazon links. You click that, you buy that item, or you click that and you go to something else and buy that item. I get a little bit and it helps. Or you can head over to my eBay page where I'm constantly getting rid of stuff. I've got a bunch of stuff up. I have a long box down here that I need to go through and throw up some more stuff. Um, but we've been, I'm transitioning currently into the back to the school slash comic book store schedule and the comic book store wants more hours, even though COVID is going on because we have so many back issues that we need to process. It's ridiculous. Well, it's job security. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, but you helped me out a little more directly that way. So I appreciate everybody that does that. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Brock Sager and, um, yeah, pretty tired. So hopefully I can get this up and be able to watch some TV before I go to bed and have to wake up in early and do all this stuff again. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.